Janine Prost. Good to see you today. Nice to see you again. Yeah, yeah. You've got a new book coming out, Eternal Kiss of Darkness. Yes. And uh, we were just kind of talking a little bit about uh, your spinoffs from Cat and Bones, and this will be another mm -hmm. spinoff. And uh, we want you to tell the readers all about it. This book features Ma uh, Mancheras as the hero and a new character previously un unintroduced to my series named Kira. And uh, readers who have already been familiar with the Night Hunter series will recognize Mancheras as one of the oldest and most powerful vampires in my series. But recently he had a problem. He's lost his visions of the future, which is one of his greatest uh, abilities. And he's not sure if that means he's going to die soon. And uh, in the midst of all that, while he's at his weakest for someone as powerful as him, he has some old enemies crawling out of the woodwork. And my heroine, Kira, is a private investigator who knows nothing about vampires and gets <laughs> stumbled up and pulled into this whole supernatural uh, standoff. So. so I know readers are uh, all familiar with your series. And uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about how it all began uh, with Cat and Bones and their relationship and uh, just to catch up a few of our sure. new viewers. Um, well, I first, I've always been a vampire fan mm -hmm. ever since I was a child. And I've always had very vivid dreams, and I would write them down when I was young. And I wanted to write a novel, but I'm lazy and put it off. And one day, right before I turned 30, I had this dream about a half-vampire woman arguing with a full vampire male, and they were arguing because he was mad that she had left him. And when I woke up, I could not get those characters out of my head and wondering how did they know each other, why did she leave him, I knew she loved him, and puzzling that out became my first novel, Halfway to the Grave. Mm -hmm. And little did I know when I started writing the novel, it would become a series and their story wouldn't be done in one book, so. Yeah, and a lovely series it is. Oh, thank you. <laughs> so, and how many more books do you have planned? Uh, or is it just ongoing? You're, you're just having um, so much fun with it. Uh, well, I mean, <laughs> I am having a blast with it. Yeah. Um, I'm right now writing book six of Cat and Bones mm -hmm. while revising book five, their fifth book, This Side of the Grave, comes out February 22nd. Mm -hmm. And um, I have at least one more contracted after that, and I'm and been talking to my editor about ending this how the series will end, and we're thinking it might take more than seven books. I have a little more plot than number of books, so <laughs> so I'm no longer going to say it's ending at seven because it's looking like it probably won't. Okay, well that's wonderful. Good news for everybody. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, what do you do in your spare time when you're not doing all this writing? I, I'm a big reader. Um, oh. I yeah. I I um, I can't imagine most authors would not be. Um, so <laughs> and I and uh, some authors don't like to read in their genre. I love to read in my genre. Oh really? I love paranormal stories, and so I get your yeah. favorites are. Oh gosh, um, so many. But but right now, probably the Sookie yeah. Backhouse series, and I'm a huge Eric fangirl. Go Eric. <laughs> um, <laughs> and um, I love reading about that. And my other favorite would probably be, um, let's see, Alona Andrews, uh, Kate Daniels series, and Melissa Mars Wicked Lovely series in the young adult market. So um, if it's paranormal, I'll read it, whatever adult, young adult, romance, urban fantasy, whatever it is, I love to read it. Yeah, and I think that's typical with, uh, you know, paranormal readers. Uh, they dabble in a lot of different genres. We like the strange. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like the unusual story as yes. well as the, the relationships that uh, you all develop. So Yeah, and there's and it's great because it's so flexible. You can yeah. have dark, you can have funny, you can have light. It, it really encompasses a lot. So yeah. it's, it's fun to write it. It's fun to read it. Yeah. So. so do you ever think about writing outside of the paranormal genre, oh, doing any I fantasy? or? I mean, if I, I, for everything I write would probably have a paranormal slant. I couldn't do normal no matter what. <laughs> um, but... I would maybe like to one day write a horror novel because I started mm. out with a love of horror movies ever since I was a kid and I, I read horror as well and I think, it's a, I think it's a great genre and it's not all just gross and spooky. There's a little bit of a stereotype um, about horror as well but there's just as many character driven great deep stories in that as in anything else and you know if you haven't read Dean Koontz or Stephen King do so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, examples of, right? Yeah. Um, what one characteristic do you think every romance hero should have? Respect for the heroine. You can have a bad boy hero and he can just be, you know, make villains shake in their shoes and, and be, you know, hard to tame and, and all of those great things that we all love to read about. 
but um, there's an underlying, he has to respect, he has to never intentionally hurt the heroine. In relationships, everyone makes mistakes, and, but, but um, if, the, if the hero really treats the heroine badly, I can't connect as a reader. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, so, mm -hmm. um, so that's my, that's my level of unable to suspend disbelief. If I have a heroine who really treats a hero, or a hero who really treats a heroine badly, mm -hmm. so he can be as bad as he wants to be to anyone else, and but not you know, her. <laughs> yeah, and, and again, he can be tough to tame. Mm -hmm. You know those bad boys heroes, mm -hmm. but um, but yeah, there has to be a certain level of respect and lines that aren't crossed. Mm -hmm. So if we reverse that and said what one characteristic should every heroine have, what do you think it would be? A uh, strong sense of self. Yeah. The heroine, I mean, I my heroine cat in my series, mm -hmm. people have yep. called her kick ass because she, yep. you know, she she'll She's get tough. in the mix and, you know, dish it out with the best of them. My other heroines don't fight physically mm -hmm. as well, mm -hmm. but they have emotional strength and um, emotional strength is is a defining characteristic and I think that strong women don't only have to be kick-ass they can also be strong um, emotionally as well and that's important to me. Now you're married right? Yes. And does your husband read your books? <laughs> I'm always curious about that. I, I, I never think to ask, he has, ask it. But. No, he hasn't read all of them. He's yeah? not a reader. He okay. has he has read a couple of mm -hmm. them um, but he's it's funny, he's into sports and athletics, yep. and that is the absolute last thing on my list of what <laughs> I ever want to do, and I'm, you know, big into reading and that sort of thing, so um, somehow we've made it work. We're married almost 18 years, uh, <laughs> um, so so I have told him, you don't need to read all my books if you never make me go play basketball with you or whatnot. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. I know the feeling. <laughs> Great to have you here today, um, and we're looking forward to all your your books. Uh, well, congratulations on your success. Oh, well, thank you so much. Good seeing you. Yes, thank so you. nice to see you again.